Hey, Legacy Life Johannesburg. I am so excited and just humbled to share the word of the Lord with you today. We have just been having, uh, we've been having church even through live stream. This is awesome that God is, um, st his word is still being released in the earth, my friends. He is, his word is still going forth in power. And um, yeah, so my dad, I know the last couple weeks has been sharing on revival. Everybody say revival, come on. It is here, it is not coming, it is here. Everybody say it's not coming, it's here, right now. It is here. Revival is here. It is in South Africa. It is in Johannesburg. It is in Legacy Life Johannesburg. And it is in the earth. And it is an amazing time to be alive. And we get to partner with his spirit. So I am just thankful that um, I get to share this word with you guys today. And um, yeah, so we're going to just dive right in. But um Today, I'm going to share a little bit about birthing revival. And um, I believe in order to birth revival, we need to know what it takes to get there, right? What does it take to birth revival? What do we do to get there? And so I love a quote by my dad that he says often, he says, revival isn't cheap. Revival isn't a basement bargain. Revival never goes on sale. It will cost everything. Revival will cost everything. I love in the Gospels, you know, it is, and, and even Apostle Paul, he says, you know, it is the, for the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus, right? I count it all as a loss, all as a loss, which I shared about the last time we started talking about surpassing, but to lose our life is to find it. When we just lose ourselves fully in Jesus, then we find it. And so with revival, I think that we have to realize first that, that that nothing else matters except the call of God in our life, the what Jesus has called us to do when we're birthing revival. And even you see that in the life of a mom or a parent. I'm not a parent yet, um, but I love to see my sister-in-law and the way that she loves her babies. Um, I would encourage you, encourage you if you can to look up, go to their website and see what you can do to get your hands on a copy of my sister's book, Birthing Isaac. It's phenomenal and I think will help a lot of you with your destiny and what you're believing to um, do in your life and your call. Um, it's called Birthing Isaac. But I love to look at my sister-in-law's life because she truly has she is so selfless and has laid her life down uh, for her children to see them succeed. And I love to see that in um, parents, you see the selfless love like the father has for us. And like now we get to have, um, because it is no longer I who live, I've been crucified with Christ, uh, but it is Christ who lives within us. So I love how my dad says that revival will cost everything. Revival will cost everything. And so in order to birth revival, um, there are a few things that we have to do. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to consecrate. Everybody say consecrate. We have to consecrate ourselves. And that word consecrate means to make or declare sacred. Dedicate formally to a divine purpose. Amen. So we have to consecrate ourselves. We have to make or declare sacred. You are set apart. I love 1 Peter 2, 9 in the Passion Translation. It reads, But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He calls you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. You are God's chosen treasure. You are a priest. That is so amazing. Ephesians 2 says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are a holy people in my favorite part of the scripture here, or I really love it all, but what I wanna emphasize here is we are set apart. 
To be consecrated is to be set apart. We are to live set apart. And I, I love in John 15 that, um, you know, we are connected to the vine, right? Jesus is the, are, are the branches, or Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And so we're connected to him. But anything that doesn't bear fruit, he comes and he prunes and he cuts away. That's really beautiful and kind of him, right? You know, I mean, if you are a gardener, just picture you have, uh, many of us have lawns, you know, and sometimes some of us pay people to do it. But if you go out and you're cleaning your lawn and you have a beautiful rose bush or you have flowers, you go in and you, it is in your kindness that you uh, get out the weeds and you clean out the weeds so that it can grow to a fuller bloom. So to consecrate yourself really is to say, God, I recognize you as the gardener of my heart. I recognize you as the one to come and I give you permission. I consecrate myself. I consecrate myself uh, holy before you come. You know, uh, even the scripture says that he is holy in second Peter. He is holy. So we are holy. As we look at him, we become like him. So when we behold him, part of us dies. Part of us has to be stripped away the flesh. The flesh has to be stripped away. I was studying that word in um, the Greek the past couple weeks. The word flesh is um, un... It's... Okay, wait a second. Let me remember. I was not even going to go here. But it's, it's unaided human effort. That's flesh. That's what the word means in Greek. Unaided human effort. So anything that we do that is unaided by God is flesh. So if we do anything on our own strength, through our own power, it is from the flesh, right? But by his spirit, we live by his spirit. So to be consecrated is to strip away that flesh. It's to strip away the desire or anything, to do anything unaided from him, to do anything apart from him. For apart from him, we are nothing and we are unable to do anything apart from him because it's not by our strength. It's not by our might nor our power, but it's by his spirit. So we have to consecrate ourselves. We have to make ourselves holy, strip away the flesh and just come before him in the likeness of his son. Is that powerful? Consecrated before him, made holy, just saying, God. And, and the reason that this is what it takes to birth revival is because in the natural, you see a spouse. You see a man and a woman. They consecrate themselves. They say they make themselves holy. They make themselves consecrated for one another. They're not going to go find another lover, or another man, another spouse, but they say, I dedicate myself, I consecrate myself, and I give myself fully to you. So we consecrate ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, I have single hearted pursuit, undivided, passionate pursuit for you and for you alone. Make myself, help me to consecrate myself, to consecrate my family, to consecrate all that I do so that I can birth revival in the earth so that I can experience revival in my family and my home that I can experience revival in my city you know we have to consecrate ourselves a, um, a lifestyle of revival is a lifestyle of humility and repentance this is what I'm talking about here when we come humbly before the Lord we come repentant and just say God clean me make me like you make me in your image uh, Matthew 5 8 says what bliss you experience when your heart is pure, for then your eyes will be open to see more and more of God. When we consecrate ourselves, when we make ourselves holy before him, come before him and we have pure hearts, we see more and more of him and we will see revival in Johannesburg. You will see revival at Legacy Life Johannesburg and in every area of your life. Um, the second point, so first we have to consecrate ourselves. Secondly, we conceive. So to conceive, you have to be intimate, right? As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. So to conceive, we have to have intimacy with Christ. We have to have intimacy in the secret place. I love how Jesus, he would go away to the mountain to be alone with the Lord. So we have to be intimate. We have to come before him in prayer, come before him, seek his face, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. So seek first his kingdom, seek first Jesus. And then in this place of intimacy, we will be able to birth revival. We will be able to birth things in the spirit. 
Um, I love, uh, if you will, I love Luke 1. Um, when we look at uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah's response versus Mary's response uh, to their uh, miraculous um, conceptions, right? So let's, if you will, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we are going to start in verse, um, let's start in verse 6. And this is about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Luke 1 verse 6, and I'm reading in the ESV. It says, And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. That looks like consecration to me. <laughs> but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. And I'm going to break down a little bit more of this, and then we'll read some more. But basically, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were barren, had no children. So Zechariah was chosen to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense in verse 9. And in verse 11, we'll start again. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. For your prayers have been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Thank you, Jesus. His prayers were heard. That is amazing. Okay. Amen. I'm going to skip a couple verses. It's talking about John coming forth. He's going to make way for Jesus. And then in verse 18, Zechariah's response to the angel. Are you ready for this? He said, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. So he comes and he's like, Angel, Gabriel, how? He's like, how could this happen? How could this happen? And how many of us, we're praying. The Lord sends an angel here and says, your prayer is going to be answered. And we go, uh, but how? I'm old. Or, but how? My fin finances don't look this. But how? But no, this is not the response we should say. When revival is here, we shouldn't ask how. We should take it by faith. So we see later in the scripture that Zechariah's then unable to speak because it, this is really quite interesting, but he's unable to speak in silent because of his response to the word of the Lord. He didn't take it by faith. And then now we're going to see Mary's miraculous conception to conceive, right? So the angel comes through. This is verse 28 in Luke 1. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's amazing. And I love in verse um, 37, the angel responds to Mary and says, For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary's response, and she said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary said, "Let's let, This is just beautiful. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. So when my dad as a prophet comes, or other prophets, or other voices in the earth, or the Lord speaks to you, or to, to Pastor Jesse, or to any of your leadership, revival is here, revival is here. We say, even if it doesn't look like it, even if there are riots, or even if there's COVID-19, even if, blah, 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 whatever reasons, whatever excuses there might be, even if you may say, I'm old, I'm too old, or even if my bank account doesn't look like it, we say, let it be to me according to your word. This is how you conceive. You conceive in faith. In intimacy, you have to conceive in faith, even when it doesn't look like it. Because verse 37, what does the angel say? For nothing will be impossible with God. Say that in your home right now. Say, for nothing will be impossible with God. Say that again. For nothing 
will be impossible with God. So to birth revival, we have to consecrate ourselves before the Lord. Then we have to conceive in intimacy. Take the word by faith. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word, for nothing is impossible with God. And then the third point that I have for birthing revival is carry. You can't birth something unless you carry it. Hmm? In the natural, you see a woman, she's impregnated, she's with child, and she's to carry it for nine months. And you know, if you see in the natural, like right now, Lisa, my dad's wife, she is 34 weeks. She is pregnant. She is, there's a cost for this, right? She's tired. She's having to uh, eat. She's having to sleep. She's having to rest. She's having to pray. She's having to take care of her body. She's having to take prenatal vi or um, certain vitamins for the baby. She's having to eat more for the baby. Hear that? To birth something, you have to eat more. You got to keep eating of this word. You have to take care of yourself. You have to steward your body right? She's having to do specific things so that she can give birth. She's having to prepare a place. She's having to prepare a place for when revival comes. Right now, you need to prepare your home for the harvest is coming. The harvest is coming, Legacy Life. You need to prepare the place for the revival. The baby is coming. Revival is coming. There's a harvest coming. Right now, Lisa and the natural, she's preparing a place. And there's a cost. Sometimes her feet are swollen because it's heavy. There's a weightiness of this call. There's a weightiness of the responsibility. But we say yes. Legacy Life Johannesburg, do you say yes to revival? Do you say yes to carrying revival? We have to consecrate ourselves. We have to conceive in intimacy. And then we have to carry in order to birth. And right now, as you're carrying, as you're carrying, you're with child, you're with, you're holding something. You may be holding your destiny, holding your purpose, holding your dream, ready to give birth. And you're saying, God, I'm ready to release the sound. I'm ready to release this word. You're carrying it. It's at a cost. But get ready because you're about to birth revival. Legacy Life Johannesburg, you're about to birth some things in the spirit in 2020. The word of the Lord shall come to pass. The promises of God are yes and amen. The year is not done yet. The year is not done. It may have, the enemy may have tried to come and steal, but I'm here to say that the Lord will restore and redeem every time. The Lord will redeem your finances. The Lord will restore every part of your life. He will redeem. He will restore. He will do all that he said and more. Hallelujah. <laughs> he will restore your joy. He will do all that he said he would do. He will do all that he said to continue to carry in faith, continue to sow in faith, continue to, to, to press in faith for you shall reap everything that you have sown in tears. You shall reap everything that you have carried when you've continued to carry, even when it's been hard and when it's been heavy, I promise you the joy of carrying that baby, carrying revival in your arms is going to surpass every trial, every bit of heaviness, every bit of struggle that you've endured for it, that moment, whenever you hold it, will, will, will make it all worth it. When you see the face of this child, of this thing that you've been carrying, when you see revival at its full, full capacity at manifesting in Johannesburg, manifesting in your family, manifesting in the lost loved one that comes into the kingdom, manifest in, in, um, generations being saved in nations being saved in south africa being saved you will say it was worth it every ounce every tear everything that i cry will be worth it so my friends i encourage you to birth revival you must consecrate yourself you must conceive an intimacy in the secret place and you must carry revival and then you will be able to birth revival amen let me pray for you father Whew, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Lord, we lean in to you in the stages of caring, in the stages, God. We lean into you. We lean into you, almighty God, our beloved. You are our strength, God. Thank you for releasing strength unto Legacy Life Johannesburg. That they would carry this out, that they would continue to run the race that you have for them, God. That they will 
become full term, Lord, as they're carrying this 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 baby, this this revival, Lord, that they will release revival in the earth. They will release revival in their homes. In their families, God, you will do it, God. Thank you that you're consecrating them, that you're helping them to conceive an intimacy, and that they will carry it and birth revival in the earth. Hallelujah. We thank you for it now. I just give their blessings over you as you enter this room. Have a blessing.